Hi Rigol, my name's Sita and I'm so glad you've joined me here to hear a wonderful story about Krishna. Now this story involves Lord Chaitanya, Madhavendra Puri and a very special deity. So I'm going to read from this book. Now 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya was visiting a town called Rimuna and there was a wonderful temple of Gopinath there. Now the deity of Gopinath was called, called Shirakora Gopinath and Lord Chaitanya told his disciples the story, the true story of how this deity became so famous. So this is the story that I'm going to read you. Lord Chaitanya tells his disciples and I'm sharing it with you. So a long time ago, Madhavendra Puri was traveling around India. He liked to travel from one place to another. And as he walked, his mind was always thinking of Lord Krishna and how he could serve the Lord. When evening came and Madhavendra Puri was tired, he would rest under a large tree. He never begged for food, but would only eat if someone came and offered food to him. This is how the sannyasis eat and live. So living in this simple way, Madhavendra Puri was satisfied because he was always chanting the holy names of Krishna. On one occasion, after walking all day, Madhavendra Puri came to Vrindavan where he saw Govardhan Hill. He was almost mad with love for Krishna and he did not know if it was day or night. Sometimes he stood up and sometimes he fell onto the ground. After circumambulating the hill, Madhavendra Puri took his bath and sat under a tree to take his evening rest. While he was sitting beneath the tree, an unknown cowherd boy came there with a pot of milk and placed it on the ground before Madhavendra Puri. Smiling, he said, please drink the milk I have brought. Why don't you beg some food to eat? What kind of meditation are you doing? When he saw the beauty of the boy, Madhavendra Puri was amazed. He felt very satisfied and hearing the boy's sweet words, he forgot all hunger and thirst. Madhavendra Puri joyfully asked, Who are you? How do you? Where do you live? And how did you know that I was fasting? The boy replied, Sir, I am a cowherd boy and I live in this village. In my village, no one fasts. Anyone can beg for food from others and so they can eat. The woman who came here to get water saw you and gave me this milk to bring you. I must go very soon to milk the cows, but I shall return to get the milk pot from you. Saying this, the boy left. Madhavendra Puri's heart was filled with wonder. He drank the milk, washed the pot and put it aside. He waited and kept looking down the path, hoping the boy would return. But the boy never came back. Madhavendra Puri could not sleep that night. He sat and chanted the Hare Krishna mantra and at the end of the night he dozed a little. Here's a picture of Madhavendra Puri being given the pot of milk by the boy. During his sleep, a wonderful dream came to him. In the dream, Madhavendra Puri saw the same boy. The boy held out his small hand and quietly took Madhavendra Puri into a bush in the jungle. I live in this bush, he said. And because of this, I suffer very much from the severe heat and the wind 
winds and cold rains. Please bring the people of the village and have them take me out of this bush. Then have them put me nicely on top of the hill. Please build a temple on top of that hill and wash me with cold water so that my body will be cleaned. I have been watching for you, you for a long time and wondering when will Madhavendra Puri come here to serve me? My name is Gopala. I am the lifter of Govardhan Hill. I have been here for such a long time. When the Mohammedans attacked the priest who was serving me, he hid me in this bush in the jungle. Then he ran away because he was afraid. Since the priest fled, I have been staying in this bush. Now please remove me carefully. After saying this, the boy disappeared. Here's a picture of the boy leading Madhavendra Puri by the hand into the bush in the jungle. Then Madhavendra Puri woke up and began to wonder about his dream. At first he was very sad. I saw Lord Krishna, but I could not recognize him. The little cowherd boy who brought him milk was Krishna. He cried for some time, and then he fixed his mind on the order of Gopala and became very peaceful. After bathing in cool water, he went to the village and spoke to the people. Please listen, please listen. The proprietor of this village, Govardhan Hari, is lying in the bushes. Let us go there with some choppers and spades and clear the way to rescue him. So he inspired the people and he led them right to the bush where Gopal had brought him. They cleared a path. And when they saw the beautiful deity covered with dirt and grass, they were struck with wonder and pleasure. After they cleaned the grass and dirt of the body of the deity, some of the people said, Oh, this deity is so very heavy. No one person can move him. Here they are, clearing the jungle to get to him. So the stronger men joined together and carried him to the top of the hill where a big stone was made into a throne. Another big stone was placed behind the deity for support. Here's a beautiful little picture of Gopala all covered with creepers and vines. He might be covered with creepers and vines and dirty but he still looks very beautiful. So, then they had a wonderful deity installation. So when the deity was installed, 900 water pots were brought from Govinda Kund. There was music, singing, dancing, and all the milk, yogurt, and ghee in the village was brought to the festival. Large bundles of Tulsi leaves, flowers, food, garments and sweets were also brought for the enjoyment of the Lord. As soon as the people of the village had understood that the deity was going to be installed, they brought such large quantities of food that the whole surface of the hill was covered. Look here. Here's a beautiful drawing of the, all of the different wonderful food offerings for Gopina. They brought their stocks of rice, dal and flour. The potters brought all kinds of cooking pots and in the morning the cooking began. Oh, it's wonderful cooking for Krishna, isn't it? Do you make nice offerings for Krishna on the appearance days? We can do this every day, but on the appearance day it's especially nice to make very special offerings. Ten Brahmanas cooked food made of grains. Five Brahmanas cooked different vegetables. And five to seven men made huge piles of chapatis 
and covered them with ghee. We all have different talents, don't we? Some of us have special dishes that we're particularly good at making. And so those Brahmanas wanted to offer their special dishes to the Lord, and that's what they did. Pots of vegetables, yogurt, sweets, and scented water was placed all around them. As the people chanted, Madhavendra Puri personally began the bathing ceremony of the deity. First, the deity was massaged with oil and then bathed in yogurt, in ghee, cow urine, cow dung, and finally clean scented water. After the bathing ceremony, Madhavendra Puri took all of the food that had been prepared by the cooks and offered it to the Lord, who was nicely dressed in new garments, sandalwood pulp and flower garlands. Because of his spiritual eyes, Madhavendra Puri could see how the deity could eat all of the food and yet the food remained as it was before. After the food, Madhavendra Puri offered water for washing his mouth and betel nuts to chew. And then while Artik was performed, everyone called, Jaya, Jaya, all glories to Gopala. A temporary temple and bed were arranged and the Lord lay down to rest. Finally, everyone offered nice prayers and obeisances. The amazing news of Gopala's appearance quickly spread. Whenever people heard the news, they became overjoyed and left their homes to travel to Vrindavan to see the deity. Here's a beautiful picture of all the different preparations that were used to clean the body of the deity in his installation ceremony. People came from all over the countryside to see Gopala and give gifts of gold, silver, garments, scented articles and edibles. Everybody offered whatever they had that was in their power to offer. They gave it to the Lord and the Lord could enjoy it, whether it was a small, humble little offering of incense or a special rose they'd grown in the garden, or whether it was silver and beautiful jewelry and nose rings and turbans and crowns or silk. Everything can be offered for Krishna's enjoyment. The store of Gopala increased daily. A rich man built a temple and every family in the land of Rajabhumi gave one cow. In this way, the worship went on for two years. Here's a picture of Gopala being beautifully worshipped. Here's all the lovely decorated Surabi cows. So beautiful. That's all I'm going to tell you right now, but this story continues. You have to watch the next video to see the continuation of the story of Madhavendra Puri and what happened in conjunction with Chandan Yatra, which is a very special sandalwood festival. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. Tell me that you like it and you want to see the next one and I'll see you soon. But for now, Hari Bol!